there are a few other things to consider. You see there, we've got the, we've got the uterine tube here, but we seem to have a number of other tubes as well. These are ligaments. These are ligaments holding things in place, so they are good things. Um, this ligament here is very straightforward. Look, can you see how this ligament is running between the ovary and the uterus? So that is the ovarian ligament, or the true ligament of the ovary, or the ligament of the ovary, but I, I like ovarian ligament, that seems a sensible name. And you see this ligament here? So this is going from the uterus and it's going out anteriorly somewhere. Now this is the round ligament. So the round ligament of the uterus, right? Um, and then there are other things. There are the suspensory ligaments of the ovary and there's the broad ligament. And these are things that people come unstuck on because it is confusing. Um, and we need to consider a bit more embryology to help us, right? You probably know that the gonads form originally up in the abdomen, in the posterior abdominal wall, in both male and female embryos before they are even determined as male or female. Kind of. So in the male and female embryos, the gonads form up on the posterior, posterior abdominal wall. This is important clinically and important anatomically for a number of reasons, and it helps explain the ligaments and the peritoneum. Okay, so embryology is very useful. Now the gonads, so the male gonads, they start up there on the posterior abdominal wall and they have to descend all the way into the testes, uh, into the scrotum, right? And we'll do that another day. The ovaries descend a little way, but not as far. So they have to descend from the posterior abdominal wall to their final position in the pelvis, right? Just below the brim of the pelvis. A number of factors are at play for this to occur, but a structure, with one of my favorite names in embryology, um, helps guide this descent. Um, the gubernaculum is the structure. You can, you, can, you can kind of think of the gubernaculum as a ligament. Um, it's, it's a condensation of mesenchyme. Um, and it runs from the inferior pole of the gonad down to the labioscrotal swellings, right? So essentially, if the labia majora are going to be out here, then they run within the body out, out there, kind of. So I'm going to try and make this description sensible, right? So the gubernaculum passes from the inferior pole of the gonad, essentially out to the labioscrotal swellings eventually. Breathe, says Apple. <sighs> and the gubernaculum comes from the word meaning rudder, the Greek word. So it's guiding the descent of the gonads. And in the case of the female pelvis, which is what we're interested in today, it's going to the guide, the go guide the gonad, guide, that, guide the ovary down to this position here, um, which it does a, a commendable job of. But it hangs around afterwards, right? So the, the ovarian ligament passing from the ovary to the uterus is a remnant of the gubernaculum. And then that continues as the round ligament of the uterus, and that's why it's going to the anterior abdominal wall, because the round ligament of the uterus is actually gonna go out through the inguinal canal, just like the spermatic cord does in the male anterior abdominal wall, right? So the round ligament of the uterus is gonna go out through the inguinal canal, and in a, then it's gonna get into the skin of the, of the labia majora. So that is how the uterus is anchored in place by the round ligament passing to the inguinal canal, right? So the uterus isn't held in place, that's a good thing. And the ovaries are held in place kind of laterally by the ovarian ligament. But on the other side of the ovary, so lateral and superior to the ovary, what's left of the gubernaculum and the other vessels that we have here are kind of forming a fold of mesentery, a fold of connective tissue. And that would be the suspensory ligament of the ovary. Does that make sense? So suspensory ligament of the ovary is suspending the, lig the ovary. The ovary is, is hanging. Um, so we talk about the ovaries being on the lateral sides of the pelvis and, and they actually, they can move around a little bit. If the gonads form in the posterior abdominal wall, then they are retroperitoneal. If you need to know more about the peritoneum, go see my cling film and peritoneum video. 
But the gonads form behind the peritoneum, the sac that is going to enclose the abdominal contents, right? So they're going to descend posterior to the, the peritoneum. And we can see that in our adult anatomy when we dissect and in these models because do you see how this model has got a white layer here? So this white layer, this is, this is the peritoneum, right, covering these structures. These are, the, this is the common iliac artery and the common iliac vein. They're covered by peritoneum because they're retroperitoneal. And look, here's the ureter here, which is going to go down to the bladder. That's retroperitoneal. And here, these are the gonadal vessels. These are the gonadal vessels. So we've got here, we've got the, in this case, the ovarian artery and a pair of ovarian veins that are intertwined around it. Can you see that that's all retroperitoneal, behind the peritoneum, it's covered in peritoneum. Um, and the uterus is as well, and the bladder is as well, and the uterine tube is as well. But the ovary is also covered by it, but the, the covering of the ovary is, is, is not the same as visceral peritoneum. It, it changes a little bit. It blends and it changes. But it means that the remnants of the, the, the gubernaculum, or the cranial part of that ligament that was up here, and the, um, the gonadal blood vessels here, there's a fold of mesentery over the top which becomes that suspensory ligament. So when the mesentery thickens and comes together, we call it the ligament, right? And it's, it's, then, it's then attaching the ovary to the lateral wall of the pelvis. Now, so the peritoneum covers the uterine tube, but where we have the fimbri and the ovary, and if the ovary, the covering of the ovary has gone a bit weird, it's gone a bit different, how would you cover the fimbri of the uterine tube with your peritoneum without closing it shut? It, it wouldn't, do you see what I mean? It wouldn't really work brilliantly, would it? So the peritoneum breaks down here. The peritoneum isn't, isn't a complete sheet of cling film covering this space, which means the uterine tube potentially opens up into this space here, right? I mean, the, the real significance of this is that bacteria could pass in through the vagina, through the cervix, into the uterus, out through the uterine tube, out through this weakness in the, peritoneal, uh, in the peritoneum and into the peritoneal cavity. Does that make sense? The other idea is the broad ligament. The broad ligament then is covering all of those things. It's got, you'll read about three parts. We've got the mesosalpinx, the mesovarium, and the mesometrium, and they're different parts of that. But it's just like uh, the mesentery um, in, the, in the abdomen, where you have peritoneum going up, covering the small intestine, meeting itself again and going back, and it's forming that mesentery. That's, that's what the broad ligament is, right? So the broad ligament then is the peritoneum that's, we can see it here. It's the peritoneum that's covering all of these structures. It's covering the ovary, it's covering the round ligament, it's covering the uterine tube, it's covering the, um, the ovarian ligament, it's covering the ureter back there. And as it covers these things, it, it just makes folds in itself, right? So that's all the broad ligament is. It's, it's, just, it's just that. It's all of this. It's all of this here, all this mesentery. That um, uterus, bladder, round ligament of the uterus, uterine tube, uterine tube here, ovary, ovarian ligament, suspensory ligaments out here, blood vessels are coming in. Right, let's build that again then. And it's got, so there's our uterus, uterus, and then these are the round ligaments of the uterus going anteriorly, right, like these things. Two uterine tubes. Then we have like an ovary there, an ovary here, another ligament here, so the ovarian ligament. And we have another ligament here. Blood vessels coming in. Blood vessels coming in here, right? So this, this is, this is um, 
what is it? Then this is the peritoneum, right? So this is peritoneum, but this is gonna form the broad ligament. So basically the peritoneum just covers all this, layers over the top of all of this, right? And of course it's gonna get lifted up by these things, right? It's gonna get lifted up and squidged down and, and stuff like that. Which means you're gonna have these ligaments forming under here and in between here and around here and stuff like that, right? And that, that, that is the broad ligament. <laughs> but that is what the broad ligament is. It's, it's that double fold of peritoneum again, forming a mes mesentery, forming a ligament with the ovary within it and the uterine tube within it. Don't forget the fimbri mean there's a, there's a bit of an opening there into the peritoneal cavity. I have no idea whether that was helpful or not. I might have just made it worse. Um, but there you go. So the other important thing about the embryology, the idea that the gonads are descending from the posterior abdominal wall is that the blood vessels are trailed behind them, right? Which means that the ovarian artery comes from the aorta. They're lateral branches of the aorta on both sides. See? Uh, the gonadal arteries are lateral branches and they're descending down to the ovaries. And you can see the gonadal veins coming back up again. And oh look, they're different on the left and the right because the inferior vena cava is pushed to the right, right? So that means that the right ovary drains blood through the right ovarian vein to the inferior vena cava. Whereas the left ovarian vein, can you see? It's draining blood to the left renal vein. Um, and that, that means it is at risk of restricted blood flow from renal pathology, like a renal carcinoma that, that pushes out, a renal cancer that pushes out into the renal vein. It's pushed to the left, means that it's susceptible to being squashed during pregnancy and things like that. And the other thing, of course, to consider is lymphatic drainage. So um, where does the lymph of the ovaries drain to? That's right, it follows the blood supply back. So. The, the lymphatic vessels are taking the same route, which means that lymphatic drainage is to lumbar lymph nodes or to para-aortic lymph nodes. So ovarian cancer will spread deep um, to the lumbar region, which is not good. The, um, the other vessels of, of the other viscera, the other organs of the pelvis receive blood from branches of the internal iliac artery, right? So here's the common iliac artery. There's the... Uh, is the external branch out here. You can see the internal branch is going in there, right? So the internal branch gives off an anterior trunk and the internal um, iliac artery then is going to supply blood to the viscera of the pelvis. Um, and the uterine artery comes from there, the vaginal artery comes from there. Now the uterine artery will anastomose with the ovarian artery. So if the ovarian artery is ligated, for example, then um, blood can flow from the uterine artery into the ovarian artery and out to the ovaries and that sort of thing, and vice versa. So there's an anastomosis between the ovarian and uterine artery, which is important. So we've talked about the female pelvic organs, um, the female reproductive organs. We've talked about the, the uterus, the ovary, the vagina, the cervix, so the ligaments are hold all these things in place and the blood vessels and what have you where they are. And we've tried to talk about the broad ligament. So with these ligaments, these are holding these structures in place. So what happens after childbirth? All these ligaments are going to get stretched, right? And they're not going to return exactly to the position they were in before childbirth. So we have the same sort of problem we have with the weakening pelvic floor by passing a baby through the muscles of the pelvic floor, right? All of these things keep the pelvic organs in place. So what is likely to happen or what's at greater risk of occurring if you stretch all these supportive ligaments? Prolapse, yeah. So it's more likely that these things are not gonna be held in place and these organs may well prolapse outside, which is why it's so important um, to have a strong pelvic floor both male and female. All right, okay, um, that's, the, that's part of the female reproductive system. I'm sure we will do more in the future. See you later.